heading over to get some lunch for myself and my wife. Um, had a really good sales meeting today and then we had a customer service uh, meeting that we had to go through. There was some miscommunication issues that came up. But uh, I like driving to go get lunch because you know sometimes you just got to get get out of the office um, you know stretch out you don't want to be sitting there all day uh, without um, you know moving around uh, and I, I'll admit that that happens sometimes when I'm sitting at the office working on some things I'm, the thing is I love doing what I'm doing and it's what I've always wanted to do so I'm like maximizing my time that I have in my office to do my work like I really sit there and do it I don't like play around I'm not playing any uh, games or pretending I'm like being very intentional about getting work done and, and doing things uh, oh my lord unbelievable somebody sitting here uh, but when you're working and building your business building your company you gotta just always make sure that you're handling things because if you don't uh, you know, things can get out of hand. And so we always have these morning meetings and I just make it clear to my sales reps what I expect of them. You know, I don't try to, I don't beat them up. I, I, I always point out what we want to fix first. And then I end the meeting with, you know, you're doing a great job, keep it up. Unless they're not, you know, doing a good job, you know, I'm going to be up front with them. I'm a military guy, so I'm going to tell you straight up. But, uh, all right, I'm going to post this up. I'm going to start making more videos like this because I think more people need to see the real side of business, not this pretend stuff that they got all over the Internet. All right, I got the food heading back to the office. Uh, you want to know, hear a crazy thing? Um, now, you know how it is when you get a new car, how you don't want nobody to to uh, touch it, you don't want nothing to happen to it, you know, you know how we could be with our cars and stuff, I'm gonna tell you a crazy story, um, with, I've had several expensive cars, the, um, the one that I drive now is a uh, Range Rover Autobiography Edition, if you ever saw that one, you know, you've seen, seen that, or you can look it up online. Uh, you know, you can get them. They're in the 250000 range. Mine is 160000 And no, I did not pay 160000 because I had to look for the deals. But I did buy it from a dealer because I wanted to uh, make sure that I got, uh, you know, very good warranty and everything, which I, you know, they gave me great warranty. But I keep my cars a long time, so I might pay a lot, but I keep them. I, my last Range Rover, I kept a 2010. I just got rid of that one maybe in 2020. Yeah, late 2020. Got rid of that one. Or actually, 2021 got rid of that one. So I drove that one a long time. But uh, it's crazy the first time that I had had an expensive car. You drive around and you it's weird so uh, i could just imagine if someone has a rolls royce or something you don't want nobody to, to actually run into your car i think tracy morgan remember they had a video showing where someone ran into his bugatti um so like it's a strange feeling you have to get used to it when you're driving a car that uh you know is up in that price range because you don't want one of these idiots to run up into you and you're like i don't you know even though it's insured and everything but you just don't want that to happen but yeah i just wanted to share that with you while i'm on my way back to the office that that is just a, it's a strange feeling when you uh you, i think we all have it where with any car but just imagine where you're paying you know 150 thousand 200 300 four hundred thousand dollars for a vehicle and you're like you know driving around not just worrying about where you're going you're worried about everybody else that's coming too close to you 
All right, uh, just wanted to share that information with you. All right, on the road again. Uh, I'm heading over to my other office. It has my uh, another company that I own in there and uh, check the mail. Uh, the office manager is out. Uh, she's looking at some apartments, I guess, and trying to move to a, another place, and she asked for the day off, so... Uh, she usually be the one that would call me to let me know what mail and stuff. So I'll go by there. I still have some of my office. Uh, I still have an office there, but I still have some of my uh, belongings that you've probably seen in some of my videos uh, still there. Like I'm not 100% moved into my new office, but I'm all, always going to maintain an office in this location. Uh, but this reminds me, there's some buildings that are in this area and it just to tell you how the universe works when my wife and i first got this building i think we've owned it for about eight nine years now uh we were looking at the building across the street and i think uh you know we were some other people also were interested in the building across the street and we didn't really want to get into a bidding war it was going to be a lot of work that needed to be done and then i just drove coming back to the office that I was leasing and I noticed a sign that was sitting there like a little bitty sign not like a big for sale sign for the other for the office building for sale and it used to be a medical building small medical office and uh it said for sale and I told my wife we should get that office and we went over there and it was like it was just for us. We were the only people that had ever bid it on it. Uh, we ended up getting an excellent price on it. Uh, I think at that time they wanted like around a hundred and something thousand dollars. We ended up getting the building, uh, cutting a deal for forty two thousand five hundred dollars. That was the price we paid cash. Um, my wife is an excellent negotiator when it comes to these, uh, doing these buildings. I'm one of those snap judgment type people. I'll, I'll jump because I know what I can do with it. And I've been able to make us a lot of money with, with this building. And uh, so either which way it would have worked out, it would have been beneficial, but we ended up getting in here with a good deal. We've had offers on this building, 250,000 and up on this one. Let's turn off the alarm here. All right, nobody's in right now. Everybody with this business is, does house calls. They do um, home care type services. So they're usually out. Nice little office. All right, I'm just gonna check the mail. See, got uh, all set up for orientations. Got one, two, three, four, five, six new people that are gonna be working here. Six new people. Got a little slot. People can put stuff in over here. Double check the door. You know, when I first got this building, something that I did, the first thing I did, the first mistake was to leave without double checking this. We have two doors to come into the front and I messed around and left that door open. And when someone tried to open it, the alarm went off screaming crazy, scared them off. All right, check my mail. This is my other office here you can see a lot of stuff still haven't moved all the stuff out of here but I'm gonna keep a lot of it in here and there's no mail there's no mail so do I need to sign anything I don't need to sign anything either all right well I'm gonna head back over to the other office I'm gonna have some good content coming up for everyone pretty soon well, we have good content anytime, but I, I just wanted to start doing this because there's a lot of fake 
fraudsters out there, people claiming that they can help business owners with leads, help business owners with advertising. They don't know what they're doing, but I think that the reason why it's hard for people to make a decision on who to work with is that they don't see people in action. And I think that seeing me in action, seeing that I'm um, real business owner, that this is, you know, my my business. Businesses are real. What I do is real. I help people. I can help you. Um, so just stay tuned. We're going to have a lot of good stuff here. Thanks. All right. Heading back. You want to know something crazy that happened over here? which I'm very proud of the city for cleaning it up. A car overheated and caught fire in front of that office building. My other, there was a smaller one here. And um, we've had, since we've moved from that building, there's been several different crazy incidents that have happened. Uh, the one that just happened on Friday and then the one, there was one that happened probably about four or five months ago or, or during the summer, a car got hit and knocked into the building, but it didn't damage the building. It kind of slid down the building. I mean, it was crazy. Um, maybe I can upload some photos showing that. Um, but crazy thing about get in our uh the second office which is the one that used to be a bank um used to be a bank of america bank and um when i saw it i knew that i wanted it it had a lot of work to get done and i'm i'm not good on uh estimating on how much work stuff needs to be done on things but the bank was for sale for about six hundred and seventy five thousand dollars for years and then, uh, but I, people knew how much work was going to have to go into it. Had the teller teller boxes, workstations in there, and they had the glass up in there, you know, because uh, I guess because of the area, they had some issues. And, um, uh, but we ended up, again, my wife, negoti negotiation master, uh, negotiated and got the building for two hundred and one thousand dollars and we had to put a hundred and fifty thousand just to get it to move in and then uh, obviously we bought a whole bunch of other things the desk and a uh, board room that the glass one that you see there the table stuff like that and new desk for us just a lot of things and uh but it's really worked out great uh building value now is over a million dollars uh, the city actually called me and they said for the assessment, uh, asked me if I was going to still use it as a bank because if I was, that, that it was going to be a double tax, but because it's not a bank, it's just regular office, the tax was going to be just regular. And I was thinking, oh man, it's going to be high. Is it going to charge me a lot? But it's actually what, before I go in and they said that I'll be able to go in there and, um, and uh, ask that it gets adjusted. But even if it doesn't get adjusted, it was gonna be something like 700 something dollars a month, which I'm like, this, you know, that's way, I didn't say it, but that was a lot less than what I was expecting, expecting it to be. But let me tell you something that I did before I even, before the property was even accepted, when we were uh, at the beginning stages of it, is I drove by that building on the way to, to my other building I drove, it, it's not too far from it. Um, I drove every day. I rerouted myself to drive by the building and I would act as if I was going to be working in that building. Like I was like, this is my building. Uh, they, we didn't even have an accepted offer yet and I was doing that. And so I would um, drive to the building and then I would drive, you know, do a U-turn and then go and I just noticed that I was doing a U-turn at a spot this whole time that has a U-turn sign up saying no U-turn uh, and I'm about to do a U-turn at that same spot right now I didn't even never notice that U-turn sign uh, but so I did that for months and then we got it accepted uh, and then you know I'm, I'm in here it's like no time uh, 
So it's, if you put it in your mind, you will get things accomplished. You just gotta get it, get that vision in your mind. And one of the ways that I do it is just, I write stuff down and I'll read it over and over or read it, you know, every few days or something. And then, uh, you know, get it into my mind where I see it, feel it, everything. And uh, let me tell you my benefits. I have my own, have my own safe, my own restroom with three sinks. I don't know how one person uses three sinks. Huge parking lot, drive through. I could, you know, drive the park under the, where the, you know, where if you were driving, do the drive through of the bank. I can actually park my cars or any car there and if it's raining and just come in. Uh, huge, like 30 cars could fit here, if not even more. Uh, I can't have a time machine for five years. Some people still pull up thinking that it is a bank and uh, they asked for the time machine. And so at some point I will, well, after five years, I could put it there. So I got another uh, four and a half years before I could do that. So it's gonna be a while. All right, I'm gonna end the video here.